All right, welcome back. Now, after that very, you know, heated conversation about the Super Eagles, we're going to calm things down a little bit with a superstar in the house with me here, wonderful female vocalist, Emma Naira. You're very welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing you look, great. You, you look great. Except for I'm in trouble. I didn't go to church today. <laughs> oh, did your parents just find that out? <laughs> I thought I was going to be here earlier, actually. Ah, That's okay. my excuse. It's all right. You don't blame me. <laughs> no, I won't blame you. Definitely. How are you doing? How's, how's work? I'm how's good. everything? Everything is going well. Um, I'm very happy with my progression in the industry. And um, right now, female artists are everywhere. And I'm really excited to be a part of that new booming movement. Yeah. I mean, to us, have we just won an award? Yes, best female she did it for the ladies. <laughs> oh, what she wanna like how she? <laughs> and it was right such a stage. beautiful moment because it's like Nigeria. They can hear us very loud and clear. In Africa, you can tell that in the industry, the entertainment industry is Nigeria, South Africa. We're neck and neck. Yeah. Ghana is there, Cameroon is there, but like we are making the it's most like noise. Fight. So <laughs> I love that. Yeah, you 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 moved back from the United States, yeah, yeah. you know, to come and start a career here. Has it been worth it so far? Definitely worth it because when I was in the U.S., we make what I like to call imitation African music because the music that we hear is actually late. If a song blows in Nigeria, it's going to blow in the U.S. after. It's never going to be at the same rate. So as you're making music as an artist, you're making what you think people want to hear right now. But the sound actually progresses, progresses. So when you're in Nigeria, you're in the pot. You know what I'm saying? You're not tasting the soup from far away. You're in the pot, so you can hear the new sounds quicker than everywhere yeah. else in the world. But like you said, um, female uh, musicians are becoming like really powerful in the, in yeah. the industry. Like, there's Amaomi, there's Tiwa, there's Waje. You know, there's all these people who are doing well. Chidima. Yeah. Are you threatening in any way? Don't, are you scared that it's going to be so tough for you to that, you know, break through all of that? Do you know why I'm not threatened? Because on the male side, you have you can even name 500 yeah, off the top of your head. Well. The good thing about being a female artist is that even though we're few, if one female wins, I win. If one female can charge this, then I can charge it. So it's like people who are breaking that ground for me and for girl me, I'm breaking ground for people under me as well. So it's such a it's a beautiful thing. And like I said, I'm happy to be a part of it. I won't say I'm threatened because. I want to be like them. Yeah. You understand? I want to be a dominant force in the industry. And if there are females doing it, it, will be, it won't be that hard for me. Yeah. Uh, the question I want to ask now, I know it's unfortunately guys never get asked you know, questions like that, you know, is the male industry too tight for you? Yeah. Like that? But something that also comes up a lot when people talk about it is that a lot of female artists tend to almost do the same kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You, for example, you say, people say you're all trying to sell the sexy. I think, you know, we're young and hot, so of course there's going to be a little bit of sexy, a little bit, because, you know, we're of age, you know what I'm saying, we're old enough to make that decision, and, you know, it's not like we're doing the same thing, we're all selling our different type of music, so if you say one person is sexy and then you name other people who are sexy, it's kind of like, oh, if I do one thing, then another girl can do it. Yeah. Tiwa pushes a lot of boundaries, so because of her, I too, I can push the bound. My first yeah. video was Your Waist. So I pushed a lot of boundaries in that video, and because of that video, other girls can push boundaries as well. Yeah. So, Let's go down to a bit of some of the controversies now. Okay. Um, I think it was about two, three months ago. I can't remember exactly when now, you know, the controversy with um, Made Men Music. Yes. Why did you want to leave Made Men Music? What happened That was there? six months ago. Oh, six months um, ago. Yeah. Why were you leaving? People were like, when I did an interview, it was actually an interviewer from Channels that okay. interviewed me, and she said, are you with Made Men? And I said, at this time, I'm not. I didn't tell her, tell her I was leaving or that I had any issue, but the problem was that my contract had lapsed, okay. and I hadn't renewed it at that point, and legally, I'm not supposed to say I'm with Made Men if I'm not with Made Men at the time. So when she aired that, oh, it was like wildfire, and when I leaves, and when I, and everybody formed their own different version of the story, but I renewed my contract, but at that particular time, and the blogs were carrying it and everything. And the funny thing about controversy is that after that controversy, people were looking at my YouTube. People were downloading <laughs> my music. So I was like, I need to make up something. Like something, you know what I'm saying? People like scandals so, so is, much. You, so does that mean you let it fester a bit? Because it took some time I mean, for you know, people, things to get and clarified. And I, I didn't even, immediately I read stuff. I tweeted something. But the tweet was ignored because it was a positive tweet. I said, I'm with Made Men. I'm with my team. But at that point, I was not. I actually wasn't. So you didn't you didn't write on the controversy is what you're saying? No, no, no. Oh, I mean controversy writes for you. Let's say Solange, <laughs> for example. Her music skyrocketed when she had that 
Scandal. Right. So scandal, it kind of works for you. And it, sometimes, you know, people don't know that celebs. We can make up our own drama just to pull you in, and then we'll drop something for so you. That's what people thought with the controversy. People thought, you know, they are trying to, you know, push a Naira's markets in quotes. <laughs> Let's just, you know, throw something no, around. No, and no. the next thing, you guys. Take it was a good actually picture. it was difficult because you know my family reads these things, and when they read it. It's like, is she telling the truth? Are they telling the truth? Yeah. And your your lies and your truths get mixed up. And then people that you can't reach, you can't t you can't call everybody and be like, oh, Nalayo, it didn't really happen. No, you can't call everybody. So you just do what you can. And you know, controversy is not really that bad unless it's you know degrading your relationships in life or your family type of thing. So you just okay. take it as an artist. You just take it. Yeah, okay. So things, all is well with the Big Men music. Yeah, all group. is well. We've just dropped an album, the Evolution album, and it was such a fun experience because people can get the album on iTunes and they can see all of us together and also our single songs as well. And our the solo chemistry songs. that works great and everything. Yeah. Something else I want to talk about is Ubi Franklin. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I want to ask this in two ways. Mm -hmm. or in two, I want to ask two questions that you're going to have to answer which of them is right. Okay. Did you join Made Men Music because you were dating him? Mm -hmm. Or did you start dating him after you joined Maybe Music? First of all, let me clear the air. Maybe Music Group, we started together. Um, there was Yaya, Ubi, me, and Basi. Okay. And it wasn't because I was dating anyone or because, you know, somebody's in love with me or anything like that. Made a Music Group was formed together. It wasn't like there was Made Men and then I came from, from America. And okay. We all started together. Um, Kukere Blue. Then we now did Your Waste, the second single. Then I started doing my own solo projects. And Made Men was formed after, like, Kukere had already gone somewhere. So it wasn't as if, you know, one big person, you know, came yeah. in. We worked hard together from Point Blank. And the whole dating thing, people get it wrong. I work hard. I do what I need to do. It wasn't because anybody saved me or because there was a big label that came and rescued me. We all worked really hard, and we all worked together. So that, that whole drama and everything <laughs> like I don't I don't okay so did you date Ubi Franklin no are no, you dating Ubi Franklin no, no, you never no. did no you were not dating first it was Yaya <laughs> that everybody pushed me to now they're pushing me to Ubi they don't want to give me that you know credit oh she, she she's working she's doing anything but we're a team and we're a family as well so there's no nothing like that type great that's clear. <laughs> Back to your music now. Okay, the, the group has dropped an album. Mm -hmm. That means your own solo album is not going to be coming anytime soon. No, no, my album is going to be next year, early next year. Okay. I want this Evolution album to go. Um, my single on there, Amigo, you guys can hear, like, I'm from Delta State. People don't really know I'm from Delta, so I tried to put, like, a little Delta flavor. I worked with Sele Baba, who is, he's, like, a genius when it comes to, you know, francophonic sound and African sound, so... Are you excited with the way the album is doing so far? Yes, the album is doing so well. And also my single, Elele, which featured David O. And congrats to David O for repping Nigeria yesterday mm -hmm. at the Mama Awards. <laughs> um, I'm so proud of him. The video will be dropping soon, so you guys will see that side of me as well. What are you hoping to see yourself you know, do in, I mean, as the year goes? We're in June already. Yes. The year's about seven months, eight months left. What are you expecting to see by the end of 2014? I'm excited about the industry right now. So many different labels, so many different artists. Me personally, I can't wait to start doing more foundation work because we have a loud voice. That's why when you see there's politics going around, they come to the musicians. If you're having like a big party, you come to musicians because we have a big voice. So I'm looking to do more charity work, work with more people. And there's been so many things going on, you know, to bring back our girls and everything. It's amazing that the world can pay attention to what's going on in Nigeria. Yeah. Now, we in Nigeria need to do a better job of, you know, our youth. Our youth, are, that's our future. That's what we need to focus on. So me, being a female, you know, children are very close to me any, anyway. And now we're talking about girls. So that, that whole movement is not a celeb thing or a, a publicity stunt. Obviously, there's something going on. We might not have all the facts, but more awareness and more things towards that side. Awards will come. Endorsements will come because yeah. as you're working, that you goes on. Yes. So with that recognition also comes responsibility. Yeah. So do you own a charity or are you going to be part of charity? I'm part of um, Yaya Foundation. Okay. I will have my foundation very soon. Um, okay. We do a lot of charity work in Asaba, where I'm from. We do what's called a medical mission every year. And my dad is a pharmacist, so when he comes home, um, from the states, we usually do stuff like that. So I'll be doing more, especially focusing on my area. That's very impressive. I mean, you always get celebrities who get called out for not doing things, but then again, I always feel like it should be mandatory. You should do yeah. it if 
and only if you want to do it. Right? And a lot and of it them, like you, yeah, a lot, a lot of, of them do things. stuff, and you just, just don't, don't hear about, about it. it. Yeah, yes. exactly. So that's that's good to know. Let's talk about your music now. How do you, I like to ask this question because most people, whenever I ask this, people always say, "Oh, I'm, I'm hip hop, Afro pop, whatever." <laughs> what, can you define your sound? You know, what are the people to do that these days? <laughs> you know, when you say Afro pop or Afro, it's because in an African market, no matter what, if you don't have bang bangs and bang bang in your song, <laughs> just forget it. You know, very few people can get away with doing strictly R and B. You'll get what you hear is Afro R&B, which is what I like to say. I do, I do Afro R&B, Afro pop, because no matter where in the world, you can know an African drum or, or a Makosa yeah. string, or and all of our music is infused with that type of thing. So it's never going to be just plain R&B or a plain pop, unless you know I want to do a transition. And even if I'm doing a transitional song, I'm still going to have my African elements to let the world know what part I'm representing. And um. Your album you're working on, mm -hmm. are you working on a particular sound or you're my sound? With that? Yeah, my sound is definitely you're gonna hear. I'm R&B trained. That's what I came here wanting to sing. But yes, if you do R&B, you have to add that elements of Africa there. You know, so my album is gonna be you know R&B, really um, African soul and things like that. That's what I do. So do you feel like you've watered down your standards? No, not because watered down. You, you just. Have to you just have to pay attention to your market. You know, if I do music I want, only r and I'm going to be called to perform in the beginning of the show. I'm never going to be a show ender. <laughs> so if you want to be a show closer, you have to pay attention to that market. And the market... But Asha closes shows. Huh? Asha closes shows. Asha, well, that's true, yeah. but she still has her Yoruba element. She's not doing pure jazz or pure soul. She's doing African jazz, African soul, so... How excited are you for the music industry now? Because, um, I mean, we're winning all these awards at the Mamas, but there's also signs that, you know, like you said, South Africa is coming. Yeah. Ghana is there. Yeah. You know, do you think it's something like Amisos T? We saw a bit of a shake in Nollywood, for example, where the Ghanaian movies yeah, and the Kenyan ones are suddenly taking over everywhere. Are you scared for I the think, Nigerian music industry? I think, industry? you know, <laughs> the thing that I want to let everybody know about our Nigerian, we need to take more time because the money is here. Out of the African countries, you can say Nigeria is top five. So we need to, you know, slow down. No need to do 10 movies in one week or <laughs> 10 songs in one week. We have the money. We have the resources. We have the locations. Use more eye, more brain, more money. You know what I'm saying? Do, do it better. No quick, 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 rush, rush, rush. Because Ghanaians, they don't have as many resources as we do. But they take their time in some things. Nigerians, too, we also take our time. But we also have what's called, you know, monopoly. If one person is big, they want to buy out everybody else instead of building up you know, yeah. people around you. So we can do a better job of that because we have money in this country. <laughs> you see Asians here, you see Indians coming here, and you're like, what are they doing here? Because they know that this place has money. No matter what people think of Nigeria, when you go outside, in the U.S., for example, they know people in Houston, they know Nigerians, they know that we have money. So that money, we need to do a better job of making it circulate, circulate it. Okay, just on a final note now, and on a personal note, because mm -hmm. I, I touched on that a bit before, are you in a relationship? No, I'm not. Why not? I think in order to be a relationship right now, it has to be somebody that knows my lifestyle because I'm hardly home, I'm always working, and I haven't really been able to make that transition of being able to put somebody in the spotlight. I'm still getting used to the spotlight, so that type of thing makes dating really difficult. So you're not even searching? Huh? Oh, I'm always searching. <laughs> you, want, you want my mom to get it? She's going to get me today. That man that interviewed you, very fine. <laughs> but no, yeah, I'm searching. You know, any... any Bachelors, you know. You want to send an email? Send an email. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Anna. It's been great you. talking to you today. Thank you, you look absolutely much. gorgeous. Good luck with all your ventures, and Thank you know. You. Your and big ups to my team: Ubi, Yaya, Sele, Techno, Basti, China. Everybody, you know, I like give shout outs. Yeah. So everybody, you know, it's not easy being a female it musician. It's not, but I'm glad that this industry, it's. Yeah, I like techno a lot. Techie! I'll tell him, do it. <laughs> Thanks for joining us as usual. You can join the conversation on Twitter at YNIGERTV. is the handle. The hashtag is rubbing mind. You can also visit the website, ynigertv slash TV. Remember, you've never seen young people talk like this before. I'll see you next week.